What is up YouTube, Matt McKeever here. And in today's video, we're gonna talk about the tax consequences and potential complications that can arise from owning a cottage in Canada. Now, quick reminder, this is actually one of five eBooks we've currently got available. So there'll be links in the video description down below. You guys can jump over and grab your free eBook on any of these subject matters. But specifically what we currently have is one on getting started in real estate. So how to discover your why. We've got this cottage ebook, which we're going to dive into the tax parts of the ebook today. We've also got one on the great filter. So why can't everyone succeed when it comes to becoming a real estate investor? Then we've also got one on how Amar from my wholesale team was able to crush it in 68 days and make $25,000 wholesaling. And then finally, one of the e-guides I'm probably most proud of is my financial independence and retiring early ebook. So all those ebooks are for free video description down below. But today, let's specifically talk to, talk about the tax consequences when it comes to owning a cottage in Canada. All right, guys, obviously today, we're just gonna be talking about the tax consequences when it comes to buying a cottage and owning a vacation rental property. But that's just really the tip of the iceberg when it comes to this ebook. So I'm gonna scroll through everything right now and try and catch just the tax section. But a reminder, you can always download this entire ebook completely free. Again, trust me, there is a lot of information. So specifically today, what I'm gonna to be talking with you about is Canadian tax considerations of owning a recreational property. And this is courtesy of my buddy Mitt from Galleon CPA. So really want to encourage you guys, we'll have a link down below where you guys can jump over and check out Galleon CPA, but really appreciate Mitt taking the time to break this down for us. But it's really important that you understand as a Canadian resident, if you're considering selling your recreational property, such as a vacation home, a cottage, or other similar secondary property, you know, the following tax points should always be kept in mind when looking at that. And it's even helpful for us to know this going into buying the cottage. So we really understand the exit, right? That's really rule number one when it comes to real estate investing. And while a vacation or recreational property may not be primarily a investment for you, we should still kind of enter it with that sort of logic and process of understanding how could we exit from this and what are the exit consequences. So let's jump into point number one that Mitt broke down for us. All right, first things first, let's talk about principal residence and secondary residence, aka recreational property or cottage. So according to the Canadian tax rules, a principal residence can be a house, apartment, or cottage that is occupied by the owner or, or by his or her spouse, domestic partner, or children. If a portion of the home is used for business or rental, then only the portion used personally qualifies as a principal residence. And a person may only designate one residence as his principal residence for any given year. Now, recreational properties and or cottages that are only used for short durations during the year may still qualify as a principal residence if the residence was solely purchased for vacation purposes and not to earn income. So let's kind of break this down and get into non-tax speak. But what Mid is really trying to explain to us here is that, hey, it's important you understand, do you own more than one property or will you own more than one property when you buy this vacation or recreational property? Because there could be tax consequences where, again, if you own more than one property, only one of those in a given year can be your principal residence. And right now, this is doubly important in my opinion during 2021 when a lot of people are considering buying a vacation property and maybe moving there eventually again what are the potential tax consequences and the timing issues that may arise if you own both properties for say longer than a year at the same time there's potentially tax consequences and this is where you know having a quick phone call with your accountant can really just shine light on this and allow you to understand any potential pitfalls from a tax perspective that you may be walking into when you're really just dreaming about that waterfront cottage. Cause yeah, I've got kind of cabin fever here too. And I'm dreaming of buying the vacation properties as well. So this is a good refresher for all of us. All right, let's move on to point number two that my buddy Mitt broke out for us when it comes to capital gains tax on the sale of a recreational property. So when a cottage is sold, tax is payable on any capital gains less any principal residence exemption. If there's a capital loss, this is not going to be deductible because losses on personal use property that's sometimes referred to as PUP uh, are not deductible except for listed personal property LPP losses, which may only be deductible from LPP gains. Real estate is not considered LPP. So it's important to keep a record of the adjusted cost basis of both the primary home and the cottage to be used to calculate the gain on sale because the principal residence exemption could apply to either property. Be sure to keep receipts not only for the purchase of the property, but any improvements that have been made, such as a deck, fence, you know, all those different things. 
So this is something I see all the time when people are thinking about getting into that vacation property, they think, oh, well, you know what? This is an investment, so I don't need to track my receipts. I'm not going to keep track of the fact that, oh, we bought the water rights and then we built a dock and then we built a boathouse and then we we brought in sand and put in like a beach volleyball court and all those things. There's real expenses here. And understand that if you're not keeping track of this, when it comes time to sell that cottage, you may end up paying more taxes than necessary because you won't be able to show what your adjusted cost basis is, right? So if we end up spending, let's say we buy a half a million dollar cottage and we sell it for a million dollars, well, we're potentially looking at half a million dollars of capital gains that could be taxed. Whereas let's say I actually spent a quarter million fixing up that half a million dollar cottage. Well, as long as I've tracked my receipts appropriately, I can actually reduce or like increase my adjusted cost base, which is going to reduce my capital gains, which will result in only $250,000 of capital gains in the made up scenario I just made. So again, it's really important you guys understand this because I see a lot of people buying shitty cottages. I want to be one of those guys right now buying a shitty cottage in 2021. It's why we kind of put together this ebook and why we've even got a giant email list if you guys are interested in buying private off-market deals that are shitty rental or shitty uh, short-term properties or cottage properties, but they've got huge upside, huge potential. If we come in there and take the same strategic renovation approach that we've used on our rental properties and use them on our cottage, we can really increase the value but there's no reason in paying unneeded taxes. So make sure you're keeping track of what your adjusted cost basis is when it comes to your vacation or recreational property. All right, let's move on to claiming principal residence exemption for the recreational or vacation property. So the taxpayer is required to report the capital gains from the sale of the property on their annual income tax return in the year of the sale, along with filing a schedule three to report the capital gain. So if the property does not qualify or is not designated as a principal residence for all the years it was owned, filing the form T2091 is mandatory to designate the property as a principal residence. So again, this maybe sounds scary, but understand whenever we drop one of these form names, so for example, the form T2091, you can literally just Google T2091 and you'll find CRA or the Canadian government will have a guide for you that will actually help you navigate either that schedule three or the T2091. But I strongly encourage you guys, if this sounds scary, if you don't like the idea of doing your own research, make sure that you get your own competent CPA to help you navigate this space. And reminder, you know, our buddies Mitt at Galleon CPA were the ones that put this together for us. So really encourage you guys to either reach out to Mitt directly or to Galleon CPA. Now let's talk about gifting the vacation or recreational property. And the reason we should talk about this is because it happens a lot more often than you realize. You might be thinking, why would I give this away? Well, actually, there's probably a good chance that you may have dreams of someday giving it to your children or your grandchildren or passing it on to another family or loved one. And again, it's important you understand that there could be consequences. So let's look at it. Parents often wish to gift their vacation or recreational property to their children. Property owners should be aware that if they transfer the property to their children, it would be subject to immediate capital gains tax on any changes in the current fair market value of the asset and the adjusted cost basis. However, transferring to the spouse or common law partner while alive or upon death is considered as a rollover of an asset and its adjusted cost basis with no reportable capital gains. Did you guys get that? If you're passing it on to your children, there's going to be a taxable event that's going to occur there and there could be serious consequences, right? If that property is appreciated a lot in the last few years, you could be looking at tons of capital gains on it. And that may literally make the idea of gifting it impractical. So again, it's really important you sit down with your tax CPA and understand the consequences of these things before we just go around giving out cottages to family members. But if you're passing it off or rolling it over to a spouse, but if you're passing it over to a spouse or common law partner, again, there's not actually going to be a tax consequence because it's deemed as a rollover. So they're just going to get your adjusted cost basis. But again, that's why it's so important. We're keeping track of what our ACB is when it comes to our cottage properties. All right, guys, that's it for this deep dive into the capital gains consequences or really just some of the tax consequences when it comes to owning a recreation or vacation property. But again, a reminder, this is actually based upon one of the ebooks, and this is really actually one page from that ebook, and that ebook is, I don't know, 20 or 30 pages long, so it's just filled with content. I wrote over 6,000 words of just amazing content for you guys on buying a cottage because I'm obsessed with buying a cottage, so I wanted to make sure I did it right. I figured if I was going to do my research, why not share with you guys as well? So I hope you get value from this ebook, but a reminder, 
We've actually got four other ebooks out there. So I'd love for you guys to go and grab them all while they're still free. Because who knows, maybe someday we'll start charging for these. But grab the ebooks for free right now. Link in the video description. Look forward to hearing your feedback and let us know what other ebooks should we be making because we're actually making an ebook a month. So we've got some big plans with some other cool ebooks on the horizon. But I'd love your input in that comment section down below. If you guys enjoyed this video, smash the like button, hit subscribe if you're new to my channel, and let me know. Where are you buying your dream cottage in the comments? Because I'm looking too.